Oh, hello. I'm author Cynthia Vespia, and I don't write romance. <laughs> Let me uh, preface this whole thing by saying I have nothing against romance authors. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because it's come to my attention that there's a, a popular crossover now called Romanticy. Uh, and I just want to come on here and directly speak to my readers and my my audience and say that I write pure fantasy. There are romantic elements in it, but it's not this hybrid that's that's raised in popularity. I grew up on old school sword and sorcery. You can see a poster of Conan the Barbarian in the back. Um, Robert E. Howard kind of stuff. Uh, Piers Anthony. Hardcore sword and sorcery adventure. So I wanted to jump on here and take a few minutes to introduce you to my latest novel series. It's called A Time of Dragons. Book one is called Reina the Dragon Slayer. Now, if you see here on the back really quick, this is a character art I had made of the character and as you can see right here, baby dragon. Why, you might ask. If she's called the Dragon Slayer, why is there a dragon perched on her shoulder? Well, read the book. Um, no, I will give you a tidbit of information. It is basically um, like the Mandalorian meets Game of Thrones. And what I mean by that is if you've seen the Mandalorian on Disney, you know that the target was essentially supposed to be uh, destroyed by the Mandalorian and he wound up taking an alternate route, which was the catalyst for the entire series. A little bit of a similar situation with uh, with book one here, with uh, Reyna is a dragon slayer, a, a very famous fear dragon slayer of dragons. She goes on a quest uh, beset by a, uh, a new ruler on the throne, uh, a little touched in the head, this guy, but uh, when she finds out it's to slay the dragon that burned her childhood home, she jumps at the chance. Um, when she gets out there, however, same similar premise she decides uh to take an alternate path which changes everything in her life uh, and is the catalyst of the story hijinks ensue as they do um and then that leads us into book two reina the dragon warrior which just came out recently um again cover out on the back i chose to do it like this because this was beautifully made for me um the synopsis is no, it's in, on the inside. I didn't want to damage the artwork, but I think these turn, both of these turned out really well. I'm very proud of them. They're getting really good reviews so far. Um, I was at the Las Vegas Book Festival recently, and they, I couldn't keep these on the table. I actually wished I had more copies because uh, both of them were gone within like two hours. Um, to those of you who missed out, I know there was at least... One girl who didn't get her copy, so if you're out there, you know, DM me and I'll, I'll hook you up with the signed copy. But, a uh, little quick backstory of this, of part two. So, now Reyna and her dragon, Rue, are, you know, trying to get away from those who would otherwise want them both killed. They have a bounty on their heads, Reyna especially. She's running from an unscrupulous king who has taken over from the first guy, uh, King Falcon, who desperately wants her head so he can prove his worth on the throne. Uh, but there's also new characters in this one, and I'm actually going to read a little bit right now from The Dragon Warrior that introduces one of those characters. And those of you on my Facebook page, uh, you had a hand in naming this character, so kudos to you and thanks so much. Uh, so let me get into it really quick. This is Chapter 6. It's called Keeper of the Dragon. <clears throat> Reyna was deep into a meal of crisp bacon and honey-soaked breads when the watcher finally made her move. She took two bold steps up to the table, squared her hips, and dropped her voice to a low, more menacing sound. Are you the dragon slayer? Reyna didn't bother looking up. This was not the time nor the place for a fight. She didn't want the attention. Besides, a young girl doing her best to impersonate a warrior wasn't worth spoiling her meal over. It was a relief to get food at all without the tavern owner giving her trouble. The rest of the patrons were too intoxicated to care whether the famed and feared dragon slayer sat in their midst. 
but the girl cared a great deal. She slammed her palm across the table, causing Raina's mead to spill over the rim of her mug. Then the girl pushed back her cloak to reveal a small dagger at her belt. She inched closer to Raina and demanded answers. I've come to challenge the mighty dragon slayer. Are you her? Raina took a sip off her mead, then set it back down. The second the mug touched the table, she reacted with swift and blinding violence. Raina caught the girl by her exposed wrist and wrenched her arm behind her back. She dragged the girl backwards into the shadow of the room where the others could not see. Then she relieved the small dagger from its sheath and pressed the tip of it under the girl's chin. Who sent you? Raina asked, her voice low but still demanding. Compromised with her own weapon used against her, the girl's bravado fell away. She tensed in Raina's grip, but her hands trembled. Apparently, she didn't shake from fear, rather excitement. You are her. The aggressive tone in her voice had been replaced with a childlike glee. Raina pressed the dagger harder into the flesh to indicate she was not to be fucked with. Who sent you? she asked again. No one sent me. I sought you myself. Why? So I could challenge the mighty slayer. To what end? Now the girl's voice fell soft. She grew sullen as she began to reel pieces of her own sad story. I wanted to prove my father wrong and show him my worth. Rana felt for the girl. She knew what it was like to want to prove your merit, especially in a world where young women were told to act in a certain manner. Rana's father died when she was still very young. Her mentor became a man by the name of Darius the Dreaded, leader of the legendary mercenary group, the Forsaken Force. I'm going to pause right there and let you know that that whole backstory of Raina is available in a an ebook that is perfectly free on my website. All you got to do is sign up for the newsletter. No purchase necessary. You get Rise of the Dragon Slayer and you learn exactly what I'm talking about here, which actually is going to come back later in this story too. Darius took Raina in when she had nowhere else to go and raised her as his own. In a group of young men, Raina fought every day to stand out from the pack and earn his respect. Ruminating on the girl's story caused Raina's grip to lax. It gave the girl enough room to wriggle free. Instead of taking the opportunity to run, she instead engaged in the fight once more. Though she felt no threat, Raina still grew impressed by her opponent's vigor. She let the girl take a couple of swipes at her as she tried to regain her dagger. Raina easily sidestepped the advances each time. Then she knocked the girl in the forehead with the handle of the weapon. Ouch! The girl staggered backwards, rubbing her head. Raina waited to see what her next move would be. If she advanced again, Raina would have to knock her unconscious. The altercation, as slight as it was, had begun to draw prying eyes. Even if the patrons of Valakai weren't up to the task of capturing Raina, there would be no doubt those who would exchange information for gold. The young girl grimaced, more out of frustration than anger, and started to engage again. Raina readied herself to catch the girl in a chokehold and put her to sleep. At the moment, Ru at that moment, Rue poked his head up. All the while the two women scuffled, he'd been content on eating his scraps of meat. Now that he cleared the plate, the dragon wanted to see what all the noise was about. The moment the girl spotted Rue, she halted in her step and squealed in delight. Rina had to shush her so the others wouldn't look over and see her dragon. The young lady suddenly grew enamored by both Rue and Rena. It really is you, she began, the keeper of the dragon. She began to bow and Rena waved her off. No, don't do that. Little caveat right there. Uh, that actually happened to me, only it wasn't any dragon slayer. Well, maybe it was, but that happened to me. I met uh, Vince McMahon, owner of the World Wrestling Federation <laughs> back in the day. And I tried to do a little bow, and he said, no, don't do that. Uh, coolest moment ever. Anyway, so I had to throw that in. <clears throat> she began to bow, and Raina waved her off. No, don't do that. I am Kalani, the girl began. I've come from a great distance to find you. My name holds weight across the sea. Raina grew surprised. Kalani beamed with delight, her cheeks pinking up as she smiled, bright like a crescent moon. Yes, in my homeland, you were regarded as a great and brave warrior. Where is your home? I'm from Ishan, across the sea, a daughter of Emperor Kivukazu. The girl's admission made Raina flinch for more than one reason. Not only did Kalani's presence bring up memories of an old dead friend, but her reveal brought with it new problems. 
Now Rena had more than one treasure with her that any mercenary would be salivating over. Should one of them capture Kalani, the Emperor of Ishan would pay a hefty fee for her return. She didn't know why Kalani traveled such a far distance to find her, and Reyna really didn't care. Whether it be guts or glory mattered not. All Reyna cared about was slipping from the tavern with Rue before the eyes pointed in their direction became blades. So there you have it. That's the introduction of Kalani. Thanks again for helping me name that character. She actually came about because every good hero needs a sidekick. And uh, I've said many times before, Reyna is the amalgamation of characters like Xena, Warrior Princess. Um, so Xena had Gabrielle. I needed to bring in somebody in part two to uh, sort of balance off of Reyna's fierceness. I needed a foible, kind of funny. That's their first meeting, and then stuff happens from there. That is a, it's a fun, it's a fun journey, and it's fun having Kalani along. She she brings another element to the story. So um, that is what I wanted to jump on here and do for you. If you'd like me to continue doing uh, sample chapters like this, let me know in the comments. As always, please you know like the page, tell your friends. Uh, Dragon Warrior is currently sitting so close to breaking the um the the hundred mark on Amazon in one of the categories uh I would I would so appreciate it if I could actually reach that it would be a huge accomplishment for me but thanks to everyone who has actually read uh A Time of Dragons 1 and 2 I'm seeing the reviews coming in I'm seeing the star ratings coming in I really appreciate it uh as I said I've enjoyed writing this one it's been a lot of fun I can't wait to dive into part 3 I already have some ideas uh, for that one, so uh, I look forward to jumping out here again and, and chatting with you guys, so take care.